Good evening, everyone. This is Ari Copel with Shattering the Matrix. Tonight, my guest is James Bartley. James is the host for the Cosmic Switchboard Show. And James has investigated alien abductions, military abductions, alien technology back engineering, secret space programs, ancient mysteries, and a surface level conspiracy fact for over 30 years. So James has had his own personal ET encrypted encounters. He is a former member of the military intelligence community and is an independent historian specializing in military history, intelligence, counterintelligence, and special operations. James has lectured in many places, including Philadelphia, Memphis, Las Vegas, San Diego, Roswell, and the legendary UFO friendship campouts at the Little Alien in Rachel, Nevada, adjacent to the infamous, of course, uh, Area 51 Groom Lake complex in central Nevada. James spoke at the RepCon near Manchester, England, which was the first ever conference dedicated to reptilian research, and most recently at the Paradigm Shift Summit in Surfer's Paradise, Australia. James has appeared as a guest for many podcasts, including Coast to Coast, Off Planet Radio, and Freeman TV, among many others, and of course, on Shattering the Matrix as well. James is also a dear friend and soul brother. So, James, thank you so much. Welcome back to my show. And Hi, Ari. It's great to be back. <laughs> Absolutely. It's been 10 years, James, since uh, yeah, you last it's spoke. A, it's been a while. It has. And a lot that of... uh, interview I did on your show has gotten millions of views. They, they keep lowering the view numbers. but I know. Yeah. I know. Oh, my God. It's just awful what, uh, what some platforms do. Uh, they just don't want the message to get out. It's unbelievable. But uh, a lot of stuff has happened since... Uh, you know, we last spoke uh, that you were on the show. A lot of people, James, um, you know, woke up, right, to what was really happening behind the scenes because of your message. I also had, of course, Evie Lorgan on the show, and she was also crucial in in helping awaken many people. So thank you so much for, for the work that you do. Um, with respect to what's going on, because, again, so much has happened in, in a 10-year span, it's almost like, on steroids, right? This, this, whatever is festering in the planet. Can you speak a little bit about what your knowledge or intel is about what's happening geopolitically right now in the world? Well, I wouldn't say that the war in Ukraine was grinding down. Uh, Putin has uh, made a commendable effort to minimize uh, civilian casualties. And a lot of people were critical, uh, myself at times too, because the pace, he seemed to be taking too long to to deal with you know this threat to his uh, his border and also to to liberate those Russians, ethnic Russians in the Donbass region. And you know he had some setbacks, but now, and if you listen to uh, a lot of the podcast of, of Colonel Mc, late the retired Colonel McGregor, he goes into detail about all this. But using this. Uh, high-tech capability they have to rain down uh, barrages on enemy enemy formations virtually anywhere they've really worn down the ukrainian army and although the possibility exists that through nato some means may uh, exist to reignite that war so to speak i hope that's not the case that they try to work through the Baltic states or Poland or somebody to poke the stick further at Russia. I hope that doesn't happen because Russia can't be bullied like so many other countries. They're a nuclear armed country. They have hypersonic weapons. And hopefully, I, I don't want to say cooler heads prevail because we're dealing with a bunch of psychopathic reptilian hybrids in the guise of humans that are that are running the NATO scheme of things. Hopefully that won't degenerate further. Uh, but it seems to me like they opened up another front by reigniting the Mideast conflict, the Arab-Israeli conflict. And by so doing, they may try to drag Iran into the conflict. Iran has ties uh, with China and Russia. And this may be an effort to foment uh, more unrest uh, in, in Russia's southern flank. So I just hope it doesn't degenerate. And 
all these other countries start uh, don't get involved. Uh, countries like Pakistan, what have you, another nuclear armed country. Let's just hope that uh, things wind down. It looks like you know, the people in Gaza are going to get hammered again. Yeah. And um, you know, and, and another thing that people need to be aware of is the once again the artificial fault lines that have been created uh, with a large swath of the somewhat awake, awake surface population. Mm -hmm. uh, this notion where they're compelled either by, you know, rote memorization, uh, media indoctrination, whatever the case may be, to choose sides, yeah. right? And, and the way the puppet masters work, they routinely work through terrorist organizations. They routinely work through nation states. Uh, there has been this long-standing uh, agenda, call it Haaretz Israel, Greater Israel, whatever the case may be, at the expense of the other countries in the region. We recently had, oh, during the lockdowns, if you remember, what seemed to be a low-yield tactical nuke go off in Beirut. Do you remember that? I do. Yeah, so that to me, I saw the video. That to me looked like it was a, a low-yield tactical nuke, and that's a relative term. If tactical nukes start to be deployed in in Ukraine slash Russia or anywhere in the Middle East, things can escalate and, and spiral out of control. And who does that benefit? The non-human controllers, the reptilian overlords of this world, who probably wouldn't mind a higher background radiation reading. I mean, we already see the baneful effects of the geoengineering, uh, the uh, chems, the aerosol spray, mm -hmm. everything else. And, and I've come to the conclusion thanks to colleagues like Jeff Brady and others, that the uh, aerosol spraying agenda is absolutely alien in origin. When you zoom in on some of these alleged chemtrail planes, you see that sometimes, oftentimes, it's just a fuselage, a cylindrical fuselage. So many alien craft are cylindrical or barrel-shaped or cigar-shaped in nature. Yep. And so you look in, you just see a cylindrical fuselage. Sometimes you see stubby wings that don't seem big enough to support the fuselage. Sometimes you see stubby wings not even attached to the fuselage when you zoom in. And you just see this inordinate amount of uh, plumage coming out the back, these chemtrail plumes. And like many others, I've seen the clickbait photos of uh, what seem to be canisters lined up inside of an airliner cabin. I would suggest that so many of these planes all over the world trailing a plume horizon to horizon. <clears throat> it is simply not realistic to believe you can cram that much solvent into a, a number of daisy chain uh, canisters in one cabin to fly horizon to horizon with these thick plumes and they're flying at all altitudes. You don't hear a sound, often is not from these things. You often sometimes see in the videos actual UFOs, yeah. a craft going through or trailing these chem planes. And sometimes these chem planes have been seen to shape shift, to change shape or fly into a cloud and not come out. I would suggest that that's not normal behavior for, you know, evergreen type aircraft or Air America type aircraft. I believe that something else is going on. And if you have a global, global dimming effect and so little photonic energy is getting down to the surface, that can only benefit beings that don't thrive on sunlight. Exactly. That can only benefit beings that are subterranean in nature, or maybe they're from worlds or dimensions where, uh, you know, things are kind of perpetually dim from our perspective. But when you have a global dimming phenomena, and the way I see it, the, the veils between worlds are thinning. Uh -huh. The membrane between worlds are thinning. This is why... There's not only so much alien activity and UFO activity and war, because when, when you study this kind of thing, William Bramley wrote a great book about this, Gods of Eden. Alien activity goes through the roof in times of conflict or mass bloodshed or mass carnage. And that's what we're seeing now. We're seeing more and more alien activity, more and more cryptid activity. And this is one of the reasons why the cryptid community has been attacked so violently in the recent past, some major dogman organizations breaking up, uh, bifurcating, 
uh, lots of turmoil in, in the field where trolls and bots and shills are harassing the legitimate cryptid researchers because the cryptid uh, research was going through the roof. It was blowing up. People were reporting dog man, Sasquatch encounters all over the place. So we have to keep all this in mind that, and also October, November, historically are periods of high unrest, high alien activity, high cryptid activity. I knew nothing was going to come about from the EBS alert a week ago, right. but I also knew that things were going to accelerate in October. And here we are. Huh, interesting. With respect to the chemtrails or geoengineering, as we know it now, right, the, the, the terminology, that's a little bit more scientific. It looks like they're terraforming, if we want to call it terraforming, alien forming, uh, so that they, do you feel like it's a an alien takeover? Uh, I know that many of these reptilian races have already been on the planet, uh, but why all of a sudden now is this occurring, do you think? Uh, I've said many times before, and, and I'll... Uh emphasize again the powers that be uh, alien uh, alien human hybrid and otherwise they they are pushing up against a celestially driven timetable not only our planet but the entire solar system is subject to cyclical celestial cataclysms every so many thousands of years and the last time we, we know we've had major mega earth changes to use that worn out term these days earth changes and climate mm -hmm. change well we had the younger dry the younger driest impact event you had the, the passage of planet x type uh, astronomical bodies uh, through our solar system the galactic super wave that uh, the physicist paul laviolette talks about mm -hmm. and all of these result in basically a reset of the surface of the planet where not just uh, human society human civilization gets radically cold because of these celestially driven cataclysms. They could vary from mass inundation, literal fire coming down from the sky, et cetera, et cetera. Thunderbolts all over the place and hurricane force winds times, you know, how many? And tsunami waves, volcanic eruptions, all of that. They cycle around every nine, 12,000 years and of the really major events. And they last, last for a long time. It's not a one night thing. We are on the cusp once again, even if there was not all this seismic scalar weaponry, Tesla weaponry going on. And I'm satisfied that seismic weaponry has been utilized in places in, like Turkey and Iran and other places over the years. And we've seen what the, uh, uh, you know, the, the scalar type or directed energy type weapons have done recently in Hawaii. Uh, all that is going on on top of the effects our planet and our solar system are already undergoing because of the impending arrival of these celestially driven cataclysms. So a lot of these beings know that they're on a timetable. They want to reduce the population as much as possible. The ones who survive uh, these ordeals, let's call them, in the last two, three years. For however, however long they survive, they will be plugged into this internet of things and mm -hmm. expected to do, I guess, Borg-like menial tasks for the system. And just as in the days of yore when the gods walked the earth, I would not doubt if with global dimming and the alien terraforming agenda, just like in the old, old days that the gods, so-called, may once again walk the earth and just come out for all to see whoever's left anyway. In the meantime, they have uh, suffused society at all levels with their alien human hybrids. We see extreme examples of this. Uh, Hillary Clinton, Fauci, people like that. Mm -hmm. Soros. I mean, these people don't even look human, if you ask me. That's true. They're, hard, they're hardcore reptilian Draco hybrids. And there are other hybrids with an alien consciousness that are seeded throughout society at all strata. So they're already among us, they're already walking around us. And that's why we see such an alien culture. It's not just cultural Marxism or wokeness or whatever anyone wants to call it. Those are just tags, labels. That whole philosophy, that whole creed ideology 
is alien in nature, is anti-family, is anti-society, is anti-civilization, is anti-everything. And so when people look at these things, they have to realize that this is what they're all about. The, the sadistic John Wayne Gacy kind of mentality is bubbling up to the surface now. It's in your face. This is who we are. And if you don't like it, tough, because we're in charge. Yeah. So, you know, we have to recognize that that's the real enemy. If, if we start, you know, take, drawing sides, and I'm not saying give credit where credit's due. Evil is what evil is. So I, it is what it is. I hate to use that term, but it, it makes sense. It's apropos in this case, because all these manifestations, the, uh, the mass uh, immigrant uh, migrant invasions of, of people who care nothing about the local culture, the, the natives, customs, traditions, they care nothing about normal kinds of uh, what we would consider normal moral ethics, what have you. Uh, many of these immigrants come from a society or a culture where rape and child bride taking and, and, and misogyny and abuse and murder are the norm. They're not going to change for us. We are expected to go along with what they want, and they're rapidly becoming a majority in many places. And now, because the way the puppet masters control things, and you can see this going back in the 60s, 70s, when uh, so-called terrorism was really uh, getting into the front pages of the, the world press, the world media, the the powers that be in the NATO scheme of things, the Gladio stay behind uh, scheme of things, as well as the Soviet Union, and um, other states, Cuba, that was sponsors of so-called left-wing terrorism. It was all just terrorism that was unleashed on the world, what they described as a global state of tension. So if they needed the German uh, Red Army faction to kill some troublesome populist politician, well, they would do that. They would blame uh, you know, these left-wing terrorists if they needed to destabilize Central Europe and in Germany even further, well, they would turn loose, you know, Bader Meinhof, Red Army Faction, allied with these Palestinian terrorist groups. And people have to ask, well, isn't it odd that some of these Palestinian terrorist groups, uh, the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine under Georgia Bosch, for example, was a, was a Marxist organization? So on the one hand, just the mainline original uh, Palestinian Liberation Organization, they just wanted statehood. They just wanted, you know, their, their country back, essentially. But then you have all these offshoots created that are striving for, like, this pan-Arabism that was more like when you step back and, and, and zoom out, the pan-Arabism is really another form of communism. And you have to ask, well, what does the these PLO offshoots hijacking jets and working with the German Bader Meinhof group, what does that have to do with Palestinian self-determination, right? Yeah. <laughs> what does Black September have to do creating all this havoc, right? What does that have to do with Palestinian self-determination? It has nothing to do with it because the powers that be over there for so long had fomented and raised and we just see the latest iterations of ISIS, al Nusra, Al-Qaeda in Iraq, and all these different tags, all these different labels. But it's all the same thing. I mean, you've seen the, 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 the pictures and the videos of hordes of ISIS with their brand new Hilux Toyota trucks, convoys of them. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. you know, what are they getting for that from a charity drive? But point <laughs> right. being is that when you – and look at the fall of the bouncing ball. Look at how they uh, just – bait and switches, and then switch the narrative. Uh, we have to be willing to put up with all this uh, degradation and abuse, you know, for security purposes, because they hate us for our freedoms, post 9-11, right? Mm -hmm. And then they flipped the switch when the Democrats in this perpetual tag team came in, and suddenly, well, if you don't like all these immigrants coming in your neighborhood, and, you know, you know, throwing acid at people and, and gang raping girls, like, you know, what's going on in Europe, in large parts of Europe, increasingly around the Western world. Well, if you don't like that, then you're, a, you're an Islamophobe. Exactly, right? yeah. And now they flip the switch again. And this default setting that so many people have, I'm not being critical, I'm just making an observation. Their default tendency 
especially those with, uh, let's say, a Christian Zionist kind of mentality, right? Mm -hmm. uh, wrought by the Schofield Bible and all that, and especially those with uh, a, a Christian Zionist mentality, also a, a military kind of background. Their default setting is always to choose one particular side in the in the in a mid, mid, Middle East conflict. So we're so they're kind of a, in a state where they already a lot of them already see this immigrant invasion. They already rec rightly so recognize that as an invasion and destruction of Western society, right? And now it seems that well they don't have to choose sides because their their default setting is you know the the, the nation state there. It doesn't seem to have to deal with all these immigration issues like the rest of the world does. Yeah. But that one nation state over there, now they're up against all these these bad guys once again. And and, and it's the script uh, before the lockdowns. It was a script before uh, the Democrats came back. It was it was the Bush to um, neocon. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting that uh, you have. Pike, the uh, Freemasonic Grandmaster, he talked about not, not only will there be a third world war, but they're going to foment this clash of civilizations, so-called, between the Muslim world and the, the Christian world. And look what's happening. Christianity is being marginalized, persecuted in, in certain places in the world. Christians are being actively persecuted. And then the, these foreign cultures, mindsets are being brought in. I mean, who would have thought that they just roll over, okay, Taliban, who we created anyway, come in, we'll, we'll kindly leave all these weapons and bases <laughs> for you, right? Yeah. And, and now, because, and I know I'm jumping all over the place here, but I'm, I'm making a point to the listening audience that so much of this is contrived, so much of this mm -hmm. is staged. And when I say staged, I don't mean that there's not real suffering and killing and mass genocide. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that there are people or things behind the scenes that have created this mass immigrant invasion, that have created this cultural Marxism. And the, the mass immigrants and the cultural Marxists are natural allies, I, I mean, uh, for each other because their destruction is the West, their destruction is the the white race uh, quite frankly because the white races are seen as the the prime enemy the main adversary against this whole agenda they don't want western civilization anymore they want to reduce everything to a state of barbarism and it cycles back to what i just said earlier this is an alien culture that's being imposed upon us all across the board, we were just being gaslighted. If we had those "they live" sunglasses, we'd plop them on, and <laughs> yeah. every TV uh, news president, presenter, we'd see for ourselves just just how many of them are just seated throughout society, and we're here just throttling one another and choosing sides. And I mean, the human race has to step up; they really have to raise their bar if they want to survive all this. That's a great point, uh, James. So, what is that? look like i know it's a, maybe a little bit early in this show to talk about that but uh, uh, you know a lot of people say well you know i am one of the ones that say well you know we need to rise up okay so in your opinion what does that look like some people think it's uh we need to come together hold hands uh you know be in a space of love raise the frequency of the earth but that's all great rhetoric uh, how, how does that how does that actually happen and and we don't really have a lot of time, I don't think. No, we don't, because it, these celestially driven cataclysms are coming back, and that's why the, the powers that be have this sense of urgency, uh, uh, putting all their chips on the table mm -hmm. and uh, just going for broke now. So uh, the I don't have this Pollyanna notion, as you know, Harry, <laughs> that, that we can all just, you know, hold hands and mm -hmm. sway in unison and Sing, we are the world, we are the children. <laughs> right. And at this point, for example, and this is important for all you people listening, okay? The ones that are, you know, are emotionally overwrought and you're set in your ways and you feel that you're on the right side of things, especially with the latest escalation, choosing sides. We're, 
you know, it used to be, you know, I stand with Ukraine. Now they just changed, changed the banner, <laughs> right? Uh, point being is that I'm not going to sit here and, like, go over the, whole, the the A to Z of the Arab-Israeli conflict, the Balfour Declaration, the USS Liberty. I, I, I'm to the point now where if I'm friendly with someone, another podcaster, another researcher who is of that mindset, that's fine. There's plenty of things we can agree upon, right? So I'm, I'm not going to spin my wheels and have to be right about the true nature of the Arab-Israeli conflict, the true nature of you know, the Ukraine-Russia uh, war, which actually goes back you know, a millennia. These long-standing grievances against Ruslan, against Russia, it's a whole you know, can of worms there. But point being is that I'd rather find points of commonality with someone than points of conflict. However, some people on the left and the right, so-called, are so fixated and so obsessed with their point of view. We really see this with, with, with the, uh, the foaming at the mouth left, where they just... They can't even, it's such a cult mentality. They can't even be on friendly terms, let alone have friendships with people they perceive to be on the right, okay? So that, that's an extreme cult-like mentality. It's this, um, only differences in degree, not in kind, as far as the, like the, uh, the immigrant Islamic mentality and the immigrants coming in from all over uh, the, the compass, not just from the Middle East or you know, Africa and other places. So, no, there's not going to be this great uprising. People always talk about, and I'm a glass half full kind of guy, <laughs> but I also, I'm also pragmatic, yeah. right? Uh, we're, we're, yes, to some degree, we're all paddling the boat, but a lot of times it seems we're paddling the oars in different directions, right? Correct. So yeah. I'd rather run with one than be dragged down by 20. I'd rather have a fewer number of, of colleagues and uh, you know people in the shield wall with me, so to speak, that have that have a similar understanding, where you know there, there's no misunderstanding, there's no there's no conflict, right? They, they know the ultimate source of all this, and it's easier for me to deal with people like that because then you can just you know, you can just talk plainly and you don't have to sugarcoat anything. You don't have to use euphemisms like, you know, we've been doing here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bless. Um, so, you know, to answer your question, it starts from within. We, we can't hope to collectively become anything unless we work on ourselves first. I mean, if you just look at how easy it is to fool the surface level population about a variety, the, the surface level woke, not woke, truth community for lack of a better term right and truth is the most objective of words there is a great number of, of uh, surface level truthers out there i think that any any suggestion any reference to aliens is automatically an offshoot of project blue beam there's no aliens no aliens exist it's all a psyop which is nonsense the information has always been there but they've got their default settings okay there are many people there uh, especially with a religious ideology, religious mentality. One can worship and venerate Jesus and not be religious. That's an important distinction to make. The people that are stuck into these dogmas and ideologies, when they wake up to the surface level oppression and manipulation, they still have their limitations as far as outlook. So it's easier for them to say, oh, Project Blue Loom, aliens don't exist. There's only demons. Uh, there's only fallen angels because that's their Welt Anschau. That's their worldview. So when you say, well, all these alien craft have been recovered over the years, alien bodies, oh, no, no, that's, that's disinformation, right? So what they've managed to do, and it was very easy to do, they managed to turn a significant swath of the truth community into active debunkers and active shills against the reality of this alien, essentially alien takeover. And, and that was very easy to do. It was not some kind of mean feat. It was the, the predispositions, uh, suppositions, uh, dogmas were already in place. Mm -hmm. 
So it was very easy for them to put out these blue beam type memes and what have you. And I always say nowadays that it's not a psyop if you've never heard it, right? True. And uh, we can spend hours and days just talking about, I mean, in the recent past, Virginia, uh, Brazil, you look at uh, Pentrick Wales and the literal military ambush of an alien craft coming out of a Stargate. I mean, how many people are familiar with that case? Virginia, uh, Brazil, where the military cordoned off parts of the city of Virginia, and they actually captured a loose alien on the ground. If it can happen in Virginia, it can happen anywhere. This is why I don't roll my eyes when I hear stories about, oh, there's an alien loose in, in the backyards somewhere in Las Vegas. Well, from an alien abductee perspective, that's not even unusual. They go in your house, right. <laughs> not just in your backyard. So when people roll their eyes about that, well, I'm not so quick to be dismissive. And knowing what I do about Virginia, knowing what I do about, you know, when all these aliens showed up at that schoolyard in, in Africa somewhere, right. terrified 62 kids. If it can happen there, it can happen anywhere. And likewise, knowing the history of these hostile aliens in, in, in Latin America, especially in Brazil, where uh, the aliens there just do horrific things to people, human mutilation, zapping them with light beams. Uh, Bob Pratt and others, uh, some of the great Brazilian ufologists, to me, they're like the World Cup of UFO researchers, these Brazilians. Uh, they've documented all this stuff, right? So when I hear stories out of Peru that the villagers there are being har seriously harassed and attacked by aliens, I don't dismiss that out of hand because I know what's happened in, in Brazil and uh, Colaris Island and places like that. And then when they say that these aliens, they pose no threat as part of the blue beam meme, well, there's been countless jet chases that have resulted in jets either crashing, disappearing, air crews dying and disappearing. Uh, jets and airliners actually being attacked by alien craft. Anyone who's serious about this subject has come across these case studies because we stand on the backs of giants in our field. Dr. James McDonald, uh, Dr. Uh, Richard Hall, all these great hardcore UFO researchers of the past, we learn from them and, and you know, we're, we're carrying the ball further. But people have to realize that there is a real enemy against humanity it's not just rich bankers with their fiat currency. That's not even a half of it. And what these surface level types will start to wake up about these occult, esoteric practices, rituals, what have you. But then they're always looking at it from like this demonic perspective, this mm -hmm. hard kind of religious perspective. They don't realize that there's a, a technical aspect to it too. Yeah. That some of these beings that are being worshipped and, you know, sacrificed for they're, they're they're literally what we would call aliens in, in some cases. They're not just demonic entities. I mean, these are flesh and blood. And when you look at the work of Mauro Baglino, Pierre Sabak, and then Baglino translating from the Hebrew, he says, these references to beings, these are not spirit beings they're referencing. These are flesh and blood beings flying around in conveyances. Pierre Sabak has proven through study of Aramaic and numerous other languages the etymol etymological roots. They're not just talking about archons. They're talking about reptilians. They're talking about lizard beings. They're talking about saurian lizard snake-like beings over and over and over in all these different languages in the, in the Middle and Near East. So, you know, people have to keep their eye on the real problem. I, I'm a realist. Uh, there's, I think, I think the death toll is just starting. Uh, we've seen an increase in the last two years because of, all that's happened mm -hmm. and we're starting to see the effects of that. And I think going forward, there'll be more and more of that. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, they're going to do more of these types of operations, uh, uh, medical mad scientist type operations against us. And already we know from the ingredients in the last treatments that were rolled out, not just the nano aspect to it, but, mm -hmm. you know, the gene deletion therapy aspect to it. Where there are ingredients and there's nanotech in the ingredients that literally have the potential to turn people into flesh eating zombies. Now, what's interesting is 
in the last week because nothing happened. You know, it was a big nothing burger, you know, on that EBS alert. Sure, yeah. A, a lot of these memes are going on. You know, I, I'm Mark safe from being <laughs> chased after out chased after zombies. Everyone had a good laugh about that, me included. But that doesn't take away from the fact that this concept of zombieism, of, of cannibalism, of flesh eating, etc. Large swaths of the surface population cultures have imbibed uh, over the countless millennia in cannibalism. There, there are many cultures in the world that are only X number of generations removed from societies where cannibalism continues to be the norm in these old countries, right? In, the, in these third world countries. So when you add these extra ingredients in there that have the potential, and then you add in the famine, the, the deliberate destruction of the of the, uh, the, food, the supply. food distribution mm -hmm. su supply system, you know, the mystery flavor enhancers, which are mm -hmm. largely from aborted fetal tissue cells, they're essentially turning people into cannibals without their knowing it. Okay. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying, it sounds long winded, but I'm trying to answer your question <laughs> that when you look at it from that perspective and you, you back up and take a wide angle perspective, A, it's like, you know, you still got to be lighthearted. You still have to have good cheer and, and hopefulness because a tendency in a lot of the truth community types is always the EBS alert was a classic example. Uh, Chicken little syndrome. Every time there's a Jade Helm type uh, exercise, every time there's a FEMA type exercise, these people just have an emotional breakdown. And it's, you know, we're, when these lockdowns first happened, Ari, I'm thinking in term, World War II terms. Okay, the occupation is just starting. How long did the Germans occupy a certain places? How long did the Japanese occupy certain places? How long did the communists occupy certain places after World War II, right? So my mind was already geared up to, I'm in it for the long haul. Yeah, It's not going to be easy. But however long these lockdowns are in place, right? I'm just in occupied territory. I'm, I'm The mentality I had was of someone living under occupation in world war ii mm -hmm. there's no telling when it's going to end right and so that's in contrast to these people every time there's a new alert every time there's a new fema uh, drill the, every time you know um the internet is looking for crisis actors these people are freaking out and and that's deliberate there are people that are fomenting this kind of fear so when what i've learned and we certainly we saw this with the pre lockdowns is this can happen with dramatic suddenness. Suddenly you're seeing these fake videos, people keeling over in China, and suddenly you just see it building up, this crescendo. They're not gonna announce it. Oh yes, they've done these things in the guise of drills, the you know, the live shooter drills, what have you. We know that a lot of those, you know, went live. We know seven 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 in Great Britain went live. We we know that. Okay. And there's also these hybrid events where the, the photos they leak out are deliberately so corny that you, you, you know, people, a certain mentality in the truth community will say, oh, this proves there were no casualties. It was all a hoax. No, there were real casualties in Mandalay Bay uh, and, and in Las Vegas because I know people that were there. OK, so but then the memes that were going around, there, there were none. See how easy it is to fool these people. So the greatest trick they've pulled thus far is making a significant portion of the truth community believe aliens aren't real, that they pose no threat, when it is an alien control system we're already <laughs> living in. Exactly, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I know I'm rambling. I don't know if no, I No, I love question, it. But, no, no, but, it's but, awesome. But, you know, the, the long and the short of it is that we got to keep our eyes on the prize, that if we hope to defeat them, especially those of you that have and I'm not being elitist saying one group or demographic is better or more equipped, better equipped to deal with this than others. However, those that already have alien abduction experiences, and especially those that have had military abduction experiences, were on top of the legitimate alien experiences. And there's an example of turning a bad thing into a good thing, glass half full. Uh, some, some people peri peri periodically and sometimes quite often get kidnapped trained and exploited as operatives by deep black elements of the military, which has been going on for a long time now. Mm -hmm. And some of them have been given extreme forms of training, astral training, 
uh, remote viewing, uh, the ability to operate or train with literal alien technology. And those types of people, and I'm in comms with a number of these types of people, uh, when you've had experiences with praying mantis beings, with Draco, with reptilians, with greys, with insectoids, things like EBS alerts are not very frightening. Things like uh, you know, right. the next Jade Helm or FEMA drill, they're not very frightening to us because of what we've already endured. So I, I really believe that if you, know, you either keep up or you get out of the way, and I'd rather run with one than dra be dragged down by 20. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing now with the, the latest expansion of this conflict, once again, we see the fault lines. If you're not standing with Israel, get off my face, but friends list right now. And this is a person maybe that you've been on, you know, somewhat friendly terms. You don't really know them. You click like in a lot of their posts every once in a while. But that default setting kicks in, right? And because the way the media is playing it up, like, you know, Hamas, known documented fact was created by Shin Bet, which is not unusual because if, if you look at the history of this, as I have, you see Frank Kitson, the British uh, counterinsurgency expert mm -hmm. in Kenya. He created these counter gangs, which was the basis for the Gakuyu rebellion, a rebellion made out of whole cloth that didn't exist, right, uh, until they made it. And then you look at uh, Colonel Edward Lansdale in the Philippines, the Huk Balaha rebellion. There was no Huk Balaha rebellion. They made one, right? We see the, the foreign aid to all these Central and Latin American countries. Uh, you know, the aid, acceptance of the aid is contingent upon the government, the governments in Latin America declaring an insurgency, right? For which the U.S. would provide advisors, counterinsurgency advisors and military hardware, all that stuff. And if there's no insurgency, if there's only campesinos who unfortunately happen to be living on land coveted by foreign transnationals, well, we'll call the campesinos and servants, right? <laughs> so what's going on is not even unusual. This is how they do it, yeah. right? So when people can step back and look at it from that perspective, there's no fault lines anymore. We're all in the same rowboat, <laughs> okay? <laughs> uh, but yeah. I'd rather be in a rowboat with people pulling the oars in the same direction. Exactly rather than being with someone who's paying lip service to being a true third and all this other stuff. But they, they think that aliens are, you know, not real. They, you know, they stand with certain countries, Ukraine, whatever the case may be. And, you know, they may, I mean, it's interesting to me, Ari, and I'm, I'm not going to even hope to try to understand it. You would think, for example, in my field, alien abductions, alien investigations, some of the people I've known, they've, They've been abducted and had horrific experience of aliens. They've been targeted by deep black elements of the military, the government, contractors, uh, used in mind control operations. And yet, so from a very personal basis, they know that, not, that the world is an illusion. They know that there's this unseen hidden hand at work. And yet they still fall for the same leftist kind of causes. Mm -hmm. They're still climate change warriors. They're still, you know, they're pro-immigration. But what are you, racist? You don't want them to have a, a similar opportunity, et cetera, et cetera. So there's this kind of like this divided consciousness, compartmentalization at work where they know they can be part of a secret, secret plan, secret operation involving aliens in the military. They know that exists. But at the same time, they have this Pollyanna mentality about other things. And I've, I, like I said, I've, I've tried not to figure this stuff out right? because I just recognize it for what it is. Yeah. And, and then I kind of move on. I try not to make a value judgment on the character or, or whatever of the individual. And that's just one example. There are many examples. Uh, there are many uh, people in the my life community that are very hardcore of mentality that they know this is a reptilian overlordship agenda. Uh, but still, there's still many people uh, with alien encounters that still have a new agey kind of exactly uh, Pollyanna and like when the rollouts and all that stuff happened, who were the first ones flocking to these so-called treatment centers? It was these new agers. 
the same ones that were telling us that we were fear-based for talking about aliens and abductions and reptilians and stuff. They're the first ones that, you know, gave into the fear and the propaganda. So uh, point being is that, you know, we just have to be aware that this is, it operates at many different levels and manifests itself in many ways. We are in a multiple threat environment. And, and the thing, and one more thing, and I want your comments on this. I've been yakking too much. Oh, no, no. I when, love it. when I hear people saying, oh, we got it so hard, they're, they're going to be pushing these 15 minute cities on us, and, you know, digital, uh, you know, currency system, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm thinking, you know what? Our ancestors survived the, the Hunnic invasions. So true. They survived the Mongol hordes. And the Mongols would leave piles of skulls behind them, right? Uh, the mass slavery uh, from the Ottoman Empire and the the, the Roman Empire and the Soviet Red Army storming through uh, Eastern Europe and just raping and killing along the way. Uh, what the Japanese did in, in China, Nanking and places. Compared to them, we've had it easy. Totally, right? totally. And then when I when I hear these people thinking, oh, I've been shadow banned. <laughs> you know, when I think that, you so know, 20, 20 year olds were hitting the beaches at Anzio and Iwo Jima. Mm-hmm. You know, flying through swarms of German fighters in a B-17 full of holes. So, so when I hear these people complaining like that, no, 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 no. We've had it easy. Right? We've got all the information in front of us. Yeah. It's actionable intel as well. So for those of you that have had my lab military abduction experience, that have had alien abduction experience, and know you have some degree of psychic ability, work on those. Work on yourself. Work on your abilities. Your ability to remote view astral travel has already been exploited, many of you, by deep black elements of the military and aliens. So you might as well figure out a way to exploit and utilize those abilities yourself because you're going to need it going forward because this is just a start. They can pull another pandemic, scamdemic, all that stuff. And look how they fooled people yet again. Another fault line, the germ theory people and then the terrain theory people, right? And the terrain people theory people, many of the more extremists in that group, they're saying there are no microbes. It's not that there's, they're not just saying there's no viruses. They're saying there are no pathogens, there's no microbes, there's no bacteria, there's no nothing, is what they're saying. <laughs> and then when I think of like in, in some of the campaigns in the Pacific in World War II, for every one combat casualty, there were up to 28 or more uh, people, uh, military people laid down by tropical diseases, dengue fevers, scrub typhus, malaria. What's, what's the commonality of all of them? Something got in. Something got in and the terrain couldn't do a damn thing about it. That's right. right? Whether it got into an insect bite, a scratch, something got in. And see, that flies in the face of the terrain theorists because they're saying there are no such thing as germs, microbes, viruses. Right. And, and they're, what they're doing also is they're conflating the two. We know that what passes for this dreaded pathogen in the last few years is nothing but a computer generated gene sequence, which is not the same as saying that it's never been isolated. It's, a, it's never been isolated. That's true. It, it's a computer generated gene sequence. That's true. That's not to say that there are not real pathogens, microbes, shedding going on. I know people I know people that have never been stabbed, never got any stabinations, and they just go out and mix with society for a mm-hmm. short period of time, and they've been shedding on. They, they, and I don't care if people call it the dreaded C word. Right. Rhymes with Ovid without the right. C, right? <laughs> right. I, I don't care if they say, I've got long Ovid. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to just jump all over, oh, you believe in the germ theory. and you see, you see how that works? Yeah. All these self-important people, you know, you, you hear it, you read this post. I just got out of a high CEO. I was really sick, had a respiratory infection. And someone chimes in, oh, you've you, you fallen for the germ theory hoax. <laughs> you see how, how dispassionate and, um, di- and uh, lack of empathy oh, that totally. we're seeing displayed, right? When there's real shedding going on, whether it's yeah. shedding due to the graphene or or, or bugs that were created in a, in a lab, something is going around because sure. people that have not even been stabbed 
are getting sick over and over and over. And so when they unleash the next thing, whatever it may be, and of course their treatment for it, well, we're, we're going to see a parallel with the blue bean thing. Oh, mm-hmm. hoax, there is mm-hmm. no such thing. Yeah. They don't exist. That's how easy it is. And, and one more point I, I'd like to make about that score is, like I said, up to 28 people or more per every one combat casualty was laid down by tropical illnesses in, in the Pacific and the Asian campaigns in particular. And these germ warfare factories, okay? By this point, I would say that these germ warfare labs, they figured out a way to make exos- exosomes weaponized. So when you hear people say there's no viruses, only exosomes, yeah, but by now they would have made we- <laughs> weaponized exosomes. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yep. So I'm not into hair splitting, but because, <laughs> but I do know that these germ, war fact, uh, germ warfare uh, labs in Ukraine and elsewhere, they exist. And they're not in there debating on whether g- germ theory is real or not. They're in there creating the next super bugs. So once again, whether it's about aliens or whether it's about, you know, germ warfare, biological warfare, they've created these artificial thought lines in the minds of all these people. Instead of people just stepping back, allowing others to have their beliefs, I stand with so-and-so country, I believe, you know, in in germs, right? And me, I'm kind of a germaphobe. I don't like going and touching things that I know, you know, shedding is probably taking place. I wash my hands. Yeah. I, don't, I don't use their, you know, the hand detoxifier thing that they keep everywhere. Right. But I, but I make sure to wash my hands. I make sure to be cleanly and hygienic because I know that diseases are past. Okay. Absolutely. So when they roll out the next thing, you're going to have a whole group of people saying, Oh, this is this another scam. Well, we know it's a scam, but that doesn't take away the real suffering, the real sicknesses. Okay. Exactly. So please, I'd, I'd like your thoughts on all this, Eric. Oh, no, absolutely. I, I agree with you. Um, I'm just uh, wondering if any of the stuff that uh, that is inside people's bodies right now, whether it was through a poke, whether it was through the shedding situation, uh, do you feel that it's uh, alien DNA type of stuff that they're putting in there mingling with people or is it more technological or is it a combination of both? Well, I, I think it's a combination because some of the – Bernard Gunther, a really great guy, a uh, friend and colleague, he's a native German, American, and uh, he has colleagues in Germany. And they've done a lot of research because a lot of these people in Germany he's in comms with, they're energy workers, they um, work with people's meridians, they're into uh, holistic health, and they're saying that – Every, virtually every person that they've treated that's had the treatments, every person they work with, they've come down with an attached entity or two or more. Oh, boy. So one of the ag- ingredients seems to be, there seems to be this demonic, lack of a better term, mm-hmm. a dark spiritual element to it. And who was it? Was it Karen Kingston or was it uh, Dr. Madej? But one or both of them were saying, that it, it's, I think Dr. Madej was saying, this is alien right. technology. And I, I agree with that, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll get to that. And then I think it was Dr. Kingston or uh, Karen Kingston or someone else who said that this, the treatments plunge people in, into this quantum demonic realm. And, and I would agree with that. Not in every case, but I've seen, I know of too many cases of, of abrupt personality changes. Uh, after people have been treated. And also we've seen the videos of someone spinning around, I think to their left, Mm -hmm. seeing something that only they can see horrified and they keel over dead. So, and also we see the Bluetooth signals in, in, in being picked up in cemeteries and places. And uh, we, we know that the, um, what Mike Adams termed the uh, bioengineered structures, they seem to be some kind of superconductor and, they're they're like taking the place of of sinews of 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 muscle mass of tendons t- tendons it seems to me ligaments it seems to me so what's the purpose is, is like in any kind of factory situation um, Ari you have and I've worked in factories and warehouses you have what they call overage right right where they just make you know for whatever reason by accident or design make more of something than they should right. 
Well, I don't know, how does that explain all these active Bluetooth signals coming from deceased people? Is that just overage, wastage, overkill? No pun intended. Where you know they didn't think they're going to get any more. They make the, they make these things overly complicated. You have these little Hydra thingies giving them, you know people peering through a microscope the finger, right? <laughs> You know, exactly. You, you have all these other all these other things going on with nano, um, and then they just die, or, or they're in in the process of dying. But is that it? And I, and I think that part of it is, and this is this sounds like fear mongering. Others have talked about this, but I, I had a I had information, you know, from the outset that this was what part of what was going on. That after people shed their mortal coil, after they have these treatments it's possible that their consciousness would then be hijacked uh, mm -hmm. and then stored in some cloud, some supercomputer, computer, something. Because something is still plugging into that. We know that astral abductions are real. We know in facilities like Dulcie and other places, they've been doing uh, experimental work on the human soul consciousness and other, other things like that. So we know that that capability already exists. So it's quite possible that they have designs for the consciousness, the souls of people who pass over as a result of these treatments. At the same time, they seem to imbue in, the, in some of the ingredients, some of the batches, this demonic spiritual element. And because of the gene deletion therapy and graphene and other things, uh, it's possible with the activation of, of 5G and other things that they may be able to remotely access a lot of people and, and get them to do their bidding for them in a totally unconscious zombie kind of fashion. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest that if they had that means to begin with, then they would be able to utilize people. I mean, think of these mass drone attacks where large, large numbers of these drones can be just sent in any one direction and you know, ha are capable of doing a variety of things. Like some of the drones that they've created, the, you know, the army research and development, for example, groups like that. Yeah. These self-assembling uh, drones that can create bridges and pontoon bridges, like immediately, they just start forming, right? So what if the same capability exists with all these people that got these treatments? Suddenly, a, you know, a switch has been turned and then mm -hmm. they just are remotely accessed and are start, starting to make to do things. Yeah. And what if the people, see, what I would like to know, Ari, is what's the rate of uh what's the term when a corpse is dying and decaying um the rate of decay basically well, when a body starts to wither away what is the rate of decay of someone who got the real batches not some kind of placebo thing and passed away somehow but someone who got the real hardcore batches full of graphene and everything else decomposition that's the word there i was looking go. for What's the rate of decomposition of people like that vice those that, you know, died like, like a day before the rollouts, let's say. Because I would like to know that because if they're pulling all these bioengineered structures, these huge clot like things out of people's bodies, um, you know, these embalmers and what have you, is that just like, new formation, is that, is that going to pass from musculature or ligaments or tendons or what have you? Uh, these bodies that have been thus treated, are they potentially decaying at a slower rate, with deco decomposition setting it at a slower rate? Good so point. maybe when something is activated, is there still enough of them left in there? Right. Right? right. In these crypts, in these... I'm, I'm not trying to be funny about it. I'm just... You know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, we're, oh, allowed, we're allowed to hypothesize. We're allowed to postulate. When we get enough information about something, it, it behooves us to try to, you know, put these, if they do this, they've come up with all these contingencies for this, that, or the other type of zombie attack, right? Why don't we, okay? So, right. because okay. With, with the food shortages and the famine, and they're, they're pushing for, 1930s style Ukraine famine, uh, dust, dust bowl type famine. That's what they're pushing for, right? So, you know, we may have a situation like the siege of Leningrad where after a while, you know, human meat was being sold in the black market. And, you know, 
dogs and the cats and the rats rapidly disappeared. Yep. And then there was really nothing left to eat, you know, for some uh, besides cadavers and what have you. So, and because people have been imbibing in these mystery flavor enhancers and oh, yeah. kids are being, you know, from the from day one, they're being uh, given treatments, which include aborted baby fetal tissues. Right. Mm -hmm. So from an early age, people are actually being turned into cannibals without even knowing it. So what happens if the switch is flicked for those that are still alive? Well, they go into another state of consciousness. Who knows what happens? Maybe they turn bloodthirsty. Maybe they just turn into, into maniacs. Who knows? Um, and there are aspects of the technology. Do people thus treated, do they suddenly can see in the infrared? Is their olfactory sense of smell and is their hearing suddenly enhanced? We don't know. Is their strength enhanced? We don't know. Okay. Can they be operated singly, individually, in groups? We don't know. The potential exists. And what about those that are deceased that are still in a relatively fresh state of decomposition? And then the switch is flicked. What happens with them? Will they be coming out of like these mortuary, coming off these mortuary tables? I mean, what's going to happen? We don't know. Okay. But I know that in some of my very realistic dreams, and these were recurring for a long period of time, there were these zombie apocalypse type dreams I kept having where I'm, I'm leading a group of survivors and we always wanted to go from A to B uh, at first light because, you know, you can see them better, right? The zombies. And then, you know, we would just go in operator mode and we just get groups of survivors out of the cities into, into the outskirts and beyond, right? And that was the, the object, a lot of these dreams I was having. And it seemed to me that it was, it was almost like an alternate reality or a future possible reality, a future possible scenario. And now what's happened the last couple of years, Ari, I cannot discount that. I, I mean, if you think about how crazy the last two, three years have been, why should something like a zombie apocalypse be any crazier than that? When we know that using, we know that in nature, and this has been experimented on in these germ warfare labs, we know that in nature, certain parasites can absolutely take over a host and control its mind, control its eating habits, control everything about it. This is very common in nature. Mm -hmm. So why would it be any difference, especially from an esoteric uh, genetic hybridization standpoint? We know that many people already have a genetic predisposition, indeed a spiritual disposition, to be taken up as a host by reptilians, Draco, uh, greys, insectoid beings, whatever, whatever the genetic mix happens to be t tends towards. So we know that hosting is already a real phenomenon. So what if there's some kind of, we know there's some kind of weird hybrid, uh, hydra thingy, synthetic hydra thingy in, in these treatments. And yep. What's the potential they have, especially the way that the graphene and the nanotech can be programmed to self-assemble in certain parts of the anatomy, major organs, endocrinary system, the brain, et cetera, et cetera, and how it's designed to, to pass through the blood-brain barrier. I think the potential exists that, you know, with the activation of the 5G especially, and, and then the, the supernatural demonic overlay on top of that, with well, these German researchers and others are saying that there's a there's a spiritual component to these ingredients, okay? And, and the smorgasbord effect, the louche effect for the controllers, the non-human controllers of this world, there would, there would be nothing better than people running in terror from someone who seems to be a crazed cannibal, right? Yeah. So, I mean, oh, you we're, know, we're, we have we're, to fact... We're in for a treat, aren't we? <laughs> well, well, we're in for a treat. But again, if, if we look at, a, at possible scenarios, possible contingencies, right? And I'm not saying that if I ever came across a zombie in real life, I wouldn't be scared. I'd be terrified. But if you kind of steal your mind to the po possibility that the potential exists. And, and another thing, you know, when the time we got left is uh, what they've done with the whole Project Bluebeam meme is, and we've seen whole swaths of the surface community, you know, these big names, these big podcasters, all jumping on the bandwagon and saying, oh, these UFO hearings are a, or a distraction, I would say, first of all, they haven't done the research. And, and to suggest that millions of people who have 
who've had alien encounters that were all part of the PSYOP, that were all part of this hoax that's it's patently absurd, okay? And likewise, it's, you know, trying to dismiss it all as some kind of psychological aberration that we all so seem to suffer from, right? We all seem to suffer from the same kinds of delusions and taken to the same kind of facilities. And you see what I mean? Um, so when you look at it from a standpoint of a large swath of the service truth community has turned negative about the subject of UFOs to the point of dismissing it and, and how, you know, with such alacrity, they have uh, embraced mainstream narrative. So when NASA came out a couple of weeks ago, ah, we, we don't really don't have any proof of extraterrestrials and that, what have you. Oh, the surface level truthers embrace that. Now, usually they just roll their eyes whenever the mainstream media or some federal agency makes this or that or the other claim, right? But if it fits into their narrative, their ideology, their dogma, that aliens don't exist, well, they embrace what NASA says. So see, NASA says that aliens don't exist. I feel a lot better, right? Because it's their confirmation bias. Sure. That does not preclude the possibility, and I never got around to answering this, but that we're in the midst of a hostile alien takeover. There, there is not just a great replacement going on with the immigrant invasion. That's part and parcel of this whole thing. This, you know, a prelude to what's coming. It's that when even those immigrants and others, you know, they're creating, creating all this havoc and mayhem. Certain demographics have been um, weaponized, mobilized against other races, other other demographics, for example. When all that is said and done, the dust settles. They're still going to, they may only keep some of them around for amusement purposes, but generally, I think, as more as time goes on, those with more of an alien hybrid mentality, uh, sensibility, they will become, if their plan reaches fruition, they will become the dominant subspecies. Uh, there's the hybrids, and then there'll be the real aliens, full blooded aliens on top of them. And, uh, so it's no surprise now that we're seeing an uptake in UFO alien activity all over the world. Uh, this notion that it can all be explained away as man-made craft or holograms is, is ludicrous because it doesn't take into account that these are happening all over the world and going on for countless millennia, right? So I just want people to, to know that if you're so inclined, there's a lot of great old school UFO research one can really stick their nose into. And I'm an old school guy. I believe in books. I believe in being an archivist. There's a lot of good stuff you can find on the internet. Uh, still a lot of old PDFs of old books. You just got to be diligent in finding these things and you will find uh, the, the answers that you're seeking. We know that there's this mass censorship. Uh, the internet is rapidly going away. The stuff that we like. So you just have to be creative in, in what search engines you use. And then when you start digging into the human mutilations, when you start digging into the people, uh, and kudos to David Politis, he made the exactly. movie or the documentary, you know, uh, Missing 411, The UFO Connection. Those of us in our field, we've known this. We know that there are what my mentor called processing plants uh, underground and probably off-world where Humans are literally being harvested, humans of all ages. I've had people on my show who've been down there in these underground installations and they've seen humans being harvested and human bodies being harvested of all ages, children included. So what we're seeing on the surface, uh, this mass global trafficking, human trafficking operation is an outgrowth of what's been going on. Uh, Sub Rosa literally underground for who knows how long uh, the human race has never been, at least since the last series of cyclical celestial cataclysms, we have not been at the top of the food chain. We've always been under predation of one sort or another. In the same way that we look at domesticated livestock as food and chattel, that's the way some of these other beings look at us, that we're a resource, okay? And when you look at it from that standpoint, all these distinctions become meaningless. I, you know, I just avoid people who are not going to, you know, attack it from that level because they'll be, you know, they'll, they'll be thinking that, oh, if we just get rid of the bankers, if we just change the money system, if we just have another election, somehow, somehow we'll fix all this. 
right? That's that's insane if you ask me, because there are deep underlying problems. So, yeah, and you know, in the time I, I got left here, I, I'd, I'd like your thoughts on this area, and I'd love you to come on my show, and, and we can hash it out even more. Oh my goodness, I would be, uh, it would be an honor to be on your show, uh, James. No, you're a um, hundred million percent, and I've allowed you to uh, obviously have the floor, because. In my opinion, you're an expert on this, and I really, really want my audience to be able to uh, listen to this information because a lot of the people that are listening to the show, uh, some of them already know about you, have heard that original show uh, that you uh, and I had, uh, and and that was an eye opener for uh, people, and you know they it got them down that rabbit hole, right? So now they are fully awakened, but. I've got a lot of new people on the show as well. So to them, this is alien <laughs> for real. And uh, so they, they need to get up to speed to what's really happening in the world. And what I would love to do uh, is have a part two and if necessary, a part three, whatever it takes to get down to really other aspects of yes. this whole at, you know topic because yeah, we, we need to definitely. talk about UFO you know the the underground bases we need to talk about uh, a lot of other things that we didn't t uh, touch upon yes. but this Sorry about that. no no what you did today was absolutely phenomenal um, I more than I even expected and so that's why I gave you the floor because uh, what you had to say is so crucial. So um, absolutely, uh, can can you please give your uh, your show uh, the the uh, URL uh, and all the other uh, ways that people can get in contact with you or find out about your uh, information? Yes, my website is called thecosmicswitchboard.com. All one word: thecosmicswitchboard.com. Uh, check out the. Uh, uh, the freebies on there if you feel so inclined uh, you know I have like some five some odd years of, of archives now of member segments and in the member segments I, I really I don't go overboard but I tend to cut loose more because you know then I don't have to like use euphemisms and mm -hmm. sugarcoat a lot of things right. and also you can find me on Facebook James Bartley slash 148 I guess it's 147 James Bartley's for me and also you can find me on Twitter Cosmic Switch 29, James Bartley. So, um, yeah, please. Uh, we have a lot of content on the Cosmic Switch Board Show. And, you know, along this vein, I didn't even talk about the back engineering of alien technology and, and all that. So, uh, you know, again, in a future show, we can delve, delve into all that. Absolutely. We're going to go ahead and do that uh, for sure. We just want to make sure that uh, the audience is able to get a hold of your information and the content that you provide, which is extremely rich and just uh, just jam packed. You know, people need to get up to speed because we really don't have a lot of time. We just need to. No, we don't. You know. no, no. And I, I do give up, provide consoles that you can if you have alien abduction experiences and military abduction experiences in particular, um, you know, and, and you want to. Uh, find out more about that you can go on my website and sign up for a console fantastic james well thank you so much for being on my show thank you uh, and giving all this great information i hope you feel better you see, i sounded like you didn't feel too good today um but... yeah it's a little congested, <laughs> right. and i appreciate uh -huh. i appreciate you getting um on the show uh, regardless and uh audience thank you very much for tuning in i hope that this has been enlightening for you and it's gotten you a little bit more uh information that you had before uh getting you prepared to very interesting times coming up so uh anyway we'll catch each other next week thank you again james god bless and feel better okay thank you you too take care